The war is now into its 18th day and Russia has escalated the offensive. Ukraine's defense ministry claims that Russians shot at women and children who were trying to evacuate along a green corridor in Kiev, killing seven people. One child is also dead. Ukrainian president said Russia was sending in new troops after Ukrainian forces put 31 of its battalion tactical groups out of action. Air raid alert sounded off in almost every region in Ukraine, including Kharkiv, Kiev, Zaraposia, uh, Zaitomir. Residents have been asked to go to the nearest shelter. On Sunday, Ukraine claimed to shoot down two Russian choppers in Kherson. On Saturday, Zelensky proposed to meet Putin with a condition that Israel mediates the talks. Zelensky asked Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett to act as an intermediary. This comes at the back of German Chancellor Scholz and French President Macron dialing Putin, urging the Russian president to agree upon an immediate ceasefire in Ukraine. Російські окупанти не можуть нас підкорити. У них немає такої сили, немає такого духу. Вони тримаються тільки на насильстві і тільки на терорі. Тільки на зброї, якої у них багато. Але в окупантів немає жодної природної основи для нормального життя. Для того, щоб люди могли відчувати щастя і мрієти. Вони органічно не здатні робити життя нормальним. Всюди, куди прийшла Росія, на чужу землю, мрії неможливі. Щодо Києва, якщо будуть сотні тисяч людей чи десятки тисяч військових, яких зараз мобілізує Росія, і вони всі прийдуть сотнями чи з тисячами танками, вони зайдуть в Київ. Ми це розуміємо. Якщо вони будуть робити коврове бомбардування і просто вирішать стерти, просто стерти історичну пам'ять всього цього регіону, історичну а, іс, іс, історію Київської Росії, історію Європи, вони зайдуть в Київ. Якщо вони знищать всіх нас, вони зайдуть в Київ. І тому, якщо в цьому ціль, то ну, тоді пускай заходять, але їм прийдеться жити на цій землі самим. Точно, точно без нас. Друзів серед нас вони тут не знайдуть. Kharkiv is under siege with multiple Russian airstrikes and missile attacks, mass destruction and trade of destruction in Ukraine's second largest city. Mikhailo Kutovy gets you the next report from Kharkiv. Take a look. Hi, my name is Mikhail Kutovy. I'm 19 years old and now I'm standing on downtown Kharkiv. There are a lot of Kharkiv symbols here. Freedom Square, Shevchenko Garden, Blood Bay, Kharkiv Citizens, Karazina University and Gazprom. There are the ruins of Kharkiv Regional State Administration behind me. When it was attacked on the morning by the rockets from the sky, Kharkiv volunteers gathered here to coordinate their work with each other and authorities. The building was destroyed by a second blow on another day. There is another destroyed building nearby, commercial business center, which is called 50th Parallel. Perhaps you didn't know, Kharkiv stands on 50th Parallel, just like Prague in Czech Republic, Frankfurt on Main in Germany, Krakow in Poland and Plymouth in Great Britain. The first independent media center of citizen journalism in Ukraine was opened during the Dignity Revolution in 2014, exactly here. The Kremlin covered says that they are hitting military targets only, but in reality, they are destroying the symbols of our cities and our freedom. But we smile through the tears and we will definitely win. Everything will be Ukraine. Sofia Fedena, Ukrainian MP, now joins us on this broadcast exclusively. Appreciate you taking the time out, Sofia, and joining us. And as a sitting MP, uh, what is it, the kind of discussions that you're having with Western nations at this point of time in terms of what Ukraine really requires in the light of a belligerent Russia, Sofia? Well, greetings to everyone from Lviv. This night I was not sleeping at all, taking the ambulances from the border. And today at 5 a.m. in the morning, we have seen a lot of explosions. That was an attack of approximately 15 rockets of Moscow Federation, a, approximately 20 kilometers from Polish border. And that was attack on the International Center for Peace and Security. 
what the discussion is, the discussion first, we need to close the sky. And I think if we can close the sky for Israeli, for Iran, Iraq, for Syria, for any other countries, why Ukrainians have to pay such a high price for all the other countries to feel safe? We need the closed sky because all the other attacks we can stop. But the attacks from air by Moscow Federation, it is very hard to stop. The second point, we need uh, the, all the possible sanctions against Moscow Federation to be implemented. Unfortunately, yesterday we have seen a big column of uh, uh, big uh, cars that of tears that are bringing different supplies to Moscow Federation through the European Union countries. And we started the protest against that as well, because the blind Moscow Federation, we are killing Ukrainian children. The third point, Ukraine needs more aircrafts and more instruments to protect itself. And the fourth thing, Ukraine needs much more medical aid. As Moscow Federation is actually demolishing and extincting cities of Ukraine, for example, well-known cities for their tragedies, Mariupol and Volnovakha, almost do not exist anymore because of shellings. We also need the punishment of Moscow Federation because they exterminate children. They shoot into pregnant women. They exterminate civilians. And furthermore, today, they were using in the east of Ukraine the phosphorus munition, phosphorus bombs that are prohibited by all the international agreements. So they are not interested in any negotiations. They are interested just into demolishing Ukraine. And one more very important point, as the today morning they attacked the Center for Peace and Security that is very close to NATO border, to the Polish border, I think this is a sign that uh, any other can country of Europe, any other country of NATO will be the next. Uh, as we see it from Ukraine, Putin is not going to stop. I think he totally got mad. And uh, I think there will should be a very, a very um, tense and very hard negotiations among all the democratic countries, how to stop the aggressor and how to stop the country that is demolishing security and, and democracy and peace uh, in all the world, not only in Ukraine. No, and one more point, yes, go at on. the beginning... Go on. Uh, uh, at the beginning, you said the conflict in Ukraine, the situation in Ukraine. I beg you to spell properly. This is not the conflict and not the situation. It's the invasion of Putin's Moscow Federation into Ukraine. It's the war that Moscow Federation is waging against Ukraine. Because all the conflicts inside my country, we can resolve on our own. Mm -hmm. But when someone is coming to your country, shelling your cities and demolishing cities and killing children, killing pregnant women, killing civilians, uh, shooting hospitals, and kindergarten, these are war crimes. schools, and these are that war means crimes. war. And absolutely, you are right when you say this is a war. Uh, and I apologize for calling this a conflict because this is not, this is a war. And the kind of atrocities that you're talking about, uh, it is just catastrophic to say the least what is going on in Ukraine at this point of time. Would you rather have the world impose sanctions at this point of time on Russia? Because it seems like this is the only way out. Russia is not willing to come to the negotiation table at the moment. Uh, actually, they want negotiations, but they put some demands that are not applicable to Ukraine. And the very important point to understand that if Moscow stops shooting, there will be no war. If Ukraine stops shooting, then there will be no Ukraine and no democratic country in general. And the Moscow Federation will have the possibility to go on. And unfortunately for today, only sanctions, it's not enough. We need, first of all, the full package of sanctions because unfortunately, many international corporations are continuing to work in Moscow Federation. For example, Ashan, Metro, and many others. Unfortunately, there is no full embargo on uh, uh, oil and gas that we see, uh, we do not see that from the Western countries. And we are begging for that as well, because we need to stop the flow of resources for Moscow Federation. And these sanctions um, should be of much more scale. But on the other point, I think NATO countries, first of all, but actually all the countries, democratic countries of the world, should find a mechanism both 
to, to close the sky for Ukraine, to uh, supply much more instruments and weapons for Ukrainians to defend. And actually, one more very important point to counter Moscow propaganda, because it's very uh, overwhelming. It's uh, covering all the world countries, and they are explaining that Ukrainians are Nazis, and the Ukrainians that are attacking Moscow army, peaceful Moscow army. But actually, this army came to Ukraine, killing Ukrainian people and terrorizing actually all the world, threatening with nuclear catastrophes, with nuclear attacks. I think the world should be also the somehow we should influence the uh, International Atomic Agency, because unfortunately, they do not see the problems in Ukraine with that Moscow Federation Army occupied Chernobyl atomic stations. And when we check the information, the majority of members of Atomic Energy uh, Agency, they are connected with Moscow Federation. They are of Moscow origin. So they do support, actually, this aggression. And the one more point, I think that on the international level, especially on the UN level, OEC level, uh, Council of Europe level, we should stop the, the possibility for Moscow Federation to influence decisions. It's inapplicable when the terrorist country has a veto vote in the Security Council of the United Nations. And that is blocking the possibility of the UN peacekeepers to come to Ukraine to stop this war and to stop this invasion. For example. Very important point, Sofia, that you bring to the fore. In fact, the NATO chief has also sounded off uh, alarm bells himself. He's gone on record to say that there is a possibility that Russia might end up using chemical weapons. Unfortunately, this is very uh, worst uh, discussion in social media. As Moscow Federation, before they attack Ukraine, they spread the propaganda, the information that Ukraine is going to use some kind of weapon. Nowadays, this is about biological weapon. And uh, uh, they spread the information, for example, that in my native city of Lviv, there is some laboratory. We have never had any biological laboratory since the 1940s. For example, in Mariupol, that was totally destroyed and demolished from the map of Ukraine, they said that in the maternity house, this, there is a biological weapon that is aimed to destroy uh, Moscow Federation citizens. But they just killed pregnant women and children doing that. So today, as I mentioned, they use for phosphorus uh, munition that is very dangerous for people, that is burning you from inside. They were already using... Uh, um, some kinds of weapons, again, the vacuum bombs that are also prohibited. And I think that they are not going to stop. Of course, I think that the people who really can stop Putin, this is the closest surrounding. The people who want to survive, the people who want to have their money blocked on the West. But uh, Putin is hidden somewhere in Ural, somewhere under the ground, and he's not communicating with people. He's just giving an orders. And that is uh, a big danger for everyone. Unfortunately, Moscow army occupied two atomic stations, not mm. only Chernobyl, but in Energodar in Zaporizhia region. And uh, they are threatening, they're telling the information that Ukraine yes. is wanted to explode that. So we should understand that Moscow Federation will not stop in case they need some more explosions and some more bloodshed. But if it is atomic station, that will be the danger for entire world. Right. Uh, you know, this is just unbelievable magnitude of humanitarian crisis that is unfolding in front of our eyes and our hearts go out to you. Uh, please stay safe, Sophia. And I appreciate you taking the time out and painting the right picture for our viewers also today. I really appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much. Now, for the first time, the Russian Ministry of Defense shows the capture of Ukrainian airfield. Images on your screen show the capture of an unknown airport. Live action footage from a Ukrainian airfield that incorporates footage from soldiers' body camps shows troops reaching the location by helicopters and disembarking before they seize the area. Kherson, the first city to fall, still shows resistance in some pockets of the city, but the city continues to witness massive attacks by the Russian troops. 
Many houses reduced to rubble, as you can see on your screens. Ukrainian tanks and vehicles damaged. A new, new video has emerged from the outskirts of Kherson, where Ukrainian vehicles can be seen burnt, ammunition destroyed. 